This is Educated Artistry. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Educated Artistry Podcast. I'm super excited to have you here today, but before we jump in, I want to do a quick little announcement. As you can see, today is episode 99, so we have episode 100 right around the corner. I want you to mark your calendars for July 10th, 6 p.m. Pacific time. We are going to have a live event for the 100th episode on Educated Artistry's YouTube channel. I am super excited. I've actually never done a live on YouTube, so I'm like, what? What's, what's a better time than to do it for this 100th episode? It's going to be a really fun Q&A episode. I want it to be super interactive. We're going to be doing live giveaways. We have some amazing sponsors that have donated some amazing courses and products to give away to you guys. So um, make sure that you are checking out Educated Artistry and my KK Artistry Instagram page to make sure that you're entered in the giveaway. And if you want to submit any questions to be answered, I'm going to be having polls on both of my stories on Instagram throughout this week. So you can go submit your question to the poll. If you want like advice on a certain situation or you kind of have a more long question, then you can submit it to educatedartistrypodcast at gmail.com. You can send me an email with it there. If there is any situation you want advice on or you just, that's another way you can submit your question. So July 10th at 6 p.m. Pacific time, I will see you there. I am so pumped. So for today's episode, as you can see from the title, we're going to be getting a little personal today because I want to share some ways that I sabotaged my business and my personal growth And then also the process of self-reflection and then the changes that I've made. I feel that this is important to have a conversation around because business and personal development really do go hand in hand. It's easy to blame like our environment, our family, circumstances, childhood for the reasons we haven't reached a certain point of success that we want. But really what I have learned throughout this last year too is that the hard, hard work but the really valuable work is when we actually take a step back and we analyze the role that we are playing in the sabotage, okay? So I'm gonna give you guys some hard truth to start this out. You can read all the books, you can take all the courses, you can listen to all the podcasts, including this one, (laughs) you can attend all the conferences, you can invest time and money and you can still be in the same spot that you are today. You have to take action and put in the reps and apply what you've learned daily. Change will not happen otherwise. The course, the podcast, the book, the conference can give you the blueprint for success, but it can't put in the reps for you. That is only something that you can do. So I want to give you guys a little bit of my story. And if you have been a part of this podcast for the past four years, which is crazy, or you've been, you know, following me on Instagram or TikTok, you've probably heard pieces of this. But I really want to dive into it with you guys a little bit more because one, this podcast is about transparency. It's about being open and honest and vulnerable about struggles that I have gone through and lessons that I have learned to help you. And to share with you, maybe this is going to resonate with somebody, maybe it won't, but this is just something that I think it's important for us to talk about. Since November, 2022, I have been intentionally committed to my personal growth and development. So every day I try to make my physical and my mental health a priority. One of the great benefits of that is that I have lost 30 pounds since I started this journey. Okay. And we're going to get into a little bit more of that later on, but I have also cut off friendships. I've recognized unhealthy patterns. I've worked on forgiveness to myself for being so cruel to myself for the actions that I was taking or by the thoughts that I was thinking about myself. Now, 
this growth has not all been uphill. So I don't want you guys to think like, oh, I just decided one day in November that I was going to change and I, look at this, only uphill from here because that's not life and that's not how it is. I've fallen back into patterns and I've taken steps back before moving forward again throughout like these past eight months. But really what I did is I've started to notice some of the self-sabotaging behaviors and some of the ways that that actually stunted my growth in my business and my personal life. And those are kind of what I want to share with you today. I think it's important for me to share this with you guys because you may relate and this may help you not feel alone. So as I break down these patterns that I've recognized to myself, I want you to be open with doing a self audit on yourself, obviously, and really take into consideration ways that you could be sabotaging your growth. I want you to remember that your business is an extension of who you are. It is not who you are. So it is very important that we are taking care of our mental and our physical health first in order to build a successful business and then therefore a successful life. So the first one that I want to get in with you guys, which was a self-sabotaging pattern that I was recognizing, was excessive drinking. I've always been open to my audience about my struggle with excessive consumption of alcohol. It's really hard for me to turn it down, even if it's a Wednesday afternoon and my friend's like, hey girl, let's go day drink. Let's get happy hour. And it could even just be the weekend because it's such a normalized thing to do, especially in your 20s, right? It's normal that everything you do and every event that there is, is very alcohol centered. The problem that I have is that when I drink, I drink, I drink. <laughs> I believe we all are aware that alcohol consumption provides no physical or mental benefits besides a few hours of fun, like a hangover the next day. And if you are me or you are like me, a giant Taco Bell order at 3 a.m., right? So I'm not here to shit on anybody's drinking habits or convince you to become sober because I'm not. But this was a habit and it became something that was a vice for me that I used in a really unhealthy way for a long time. So we're going to go back to self-audit, which you guys are going to hear me talk about this a lot. I'm going to go back to self-audits. Sitting back and really looking at yourself from like if you could double yourself and look at her or him or they. And you could give them advice and look at their life from an outside perspective. What advice would you give them, right? So I had to look at the reasons when I had that, oh, I want to drink. I need a bottle of wine. Like, give me the alcohol. Let's go out, get drinks, right? So I had to take inventory of the feelings that were surrounding it. Was I overwhelmed? Was I sad? Was I frustrated? Was I procrastinating? Was my excessive drinking really helping me get to my goals? Surprise, the answer was no, right? So I had found that when I was feeling overwhelmed or stressed or I really if I wanted to kind of put something off that was a little bit scary, I would turn to alcohol, Right? And so the first thing that I had to do is once I did this self audit, I really had to realize like when I was feeling like turning to this and using it as a vice and when I was actually like socially enjoying it and being responsible and try to pull those two apart. Right. So one of the things that I actually did first was I had an open conversation with my friends. I let my close friends know that I was going to take a break from drinking. And I also let them know that I needed support on keeping the commitment if we were out together. So if we made plans, I would usually offer to be the DD and I would bring like either ingredients to mix a mocktail or I'd bring like my poppy drinks or whatever. So I would kind of have something that I felt like I was drinking to. The great thing is is that when I started opening up about it, a lot of my friends felt the same way that they also wanted to take a break from drinking and redefine their relationship with alcohol. So this was something that we could kind of do as a group together and support each other and also come up with other activities to do on the weekends, except for going out to the bars and drinking. And this was something great for all of us. And I think it's so important to have an open conversation with your friends and not saying like, hey guys, don't drink with me, but just saying, hey, this is what I'm going through right now. This is a change that is important for me to make. And I would love your support. And your true friends are going to support you. 
even if you do go out with them at the bar, they're not going to be like, hey, you're not going to get a drink, get a shot. Oh my God, it's just one drink. Come on, Kayla. Like they're going to support you along that. And I'm really lucky that I have a, a close group of friends that really did. And they ended up wanting to be on the journey as well. Now, for me too, alcoholism runs in my family. So I feel like it's always something that I'm going to have to be aware and put intentional effort into. But once I addressed the reasons that I went to alcohol, I was able to recognize it and not mindlessly use it as a vice, which then in turn has helped me just become a healthier person overall and work on just recognizing emotions. And when I turn to something, instead of like looking at them face on. So the next way that I was sabotaging was, <laughs> a lot, I think a lot of you guys are going to relate with this one, okay? Especially as service providers, lack of sleep, movement, and fuel. I don't want you to roll your eyes at me. <laughs> In November, before I started, like I guess October, before I started everything and decided to take small steps every day to improve my mental and my physical health, I was the heaviest that I ever had been. I had always struggled with weight in my body image, but it felt out of control. I also just didn't feel very good physically. Clothes were starting to be pretty tight. I was going up in sizes. I just felt bloated. I didn't feel myself and I didn't feel confident. And I had a really hard time with self-love with looking in the mirror. And in the beauty industry, it is glorified to not take breaks, to work long hours, to survive on caffeine. And I think we all can recognize and agree that that is not healthy, right? In order for us to show up as our best selves in our business and our personal relationships, you have to fill your cup first. You have to prioritize yourself first. We get in this mindset that taking care of everyone around us first instead of ourselves is selfless, it's a priority, and it's the best way to show up. However, after a lot of time, I realize it's actually the opposite. If you're showing up to a full day of lash clients and you're running on four hours of sleep, you haven't eaten, your back is killing you because you took 10 clients the day before, how is that going to benefit your clients today? It's not. It is self-sabotaging by not setting yourself up for success. And I totally understand how working on all of these things can be overwhelming and hard because most likely we all have habits that may be unhealthy that we have to break in order to build new ones. With just like working out, you have to start with a lighter weight and lower reps. And eventually those will be so easy that you barely have to put effort into it. So then you can add on some heavier weights and some more reps. So this is how I like to think about habit building and habit stacking. Something I talk about a lot to my audience is having a morning routine. Now, some people you'll probably see on TikTok or Instagram, people have these morning routines. You're like, how the hell do you do these 15-step morning routines? Like, that's insane. But what people do and what a lot of people don't talk about is they start with one thing. Maybe it could be drinking a big glass of water right when you wake up. You start doing that every single morning, building those reps, putting in that work. It's going to start becoming a habit and you won't even have to think about it. So then at that point, you can add something else on, heavier weights, right? Heavier weights, more reps. And then maybe it's reading for 15 minutes in the morning, or it's meditating, or it's journaling. And then that thing becomes a habit also. So now we have our water and our reading, and now we can stack something else, and we're not even having to think about it. It's just like any bad habits that you may have that you don't even realize that you do because they're so ingrained into your routine. We want to ingrain these new healthy habits into our routine. So I want to go over a few changes that I made. Keep in mind, I am obviously still and will always be in the process of building these new habits because I feel like we're always learning, growing, and changing, and our life is changing and new habits are needing to be built. So the first one, we're going to go through each one, lack of sleep, lack of movement, and fuel. So lack of sleep. Once again, I had to do a self-audit. <laughs> I realized I would go and lay down in bed like between 9.30 and 10. I have like a little bedtime reminder on my phone that goes off at 9.30 and it puts all my notifications on silent. And then that's when I start kind of getting ready for bed, sometimes earlier, honestly. And I usually lay down by like 9.45 or 10. And then what I would realize is I would lay on my phone and I would scroll for hours. And sometimes it would be fun and light and other times I would just be doom scrolling. My mind would start racing about all the things I needed to do why I hadn't accomplished a goal that I set, why I didn't have a 25K launch like this random creator did. 
I was falling asleep so fucking anxious. And by the time I actually could fall asleep, because even when I would put my phone away and turn it off, I could not turn off my mind. I was thinking about all the things I was comparing myself. I just could not shut it off. I started to put my phone outside of my room. It charges outside of my room now at night. I obviously have my important contacts if there's ever an emergency because I feel like that's something that people are like, but what if something happens? Because my phone's also on Do Not Disturb. But obviously when you have people in your like favorites, I think it's on your iPhone, their phone call will come through no matter what, right? So I'm like, if anybody has to get a hold of me, all the important people are going to be able to get through to me, right? So something else besides placing my phone away from my bedroom is that I started reading like a fictional book at the end of the night. So I read two books at a time. I've talked about this before. I read like in the morning, I read like a mindset, um, a self-help, a business book in the morning. And at night I read something that's, you know, fictional. It's a story, something that I can kind of like escape into another world and turn my mind off a little bit. And also reading makes me sleepy. So if you enjoy reading or maybe you want to get into reading, I think this is a really good time to start. And it does help if you do feel like you're having a hard time sleeping. There's also some great podcasts that I listen to. There is one called Nothing Much Happens. I'm pretty sure that's what it's called. And it's this woman that tells these like beautiful stories and she's got like It's just so soothing. Her voice is wonderful. And she just, it's like this beautiful bedtime story. And those make me freaking knock out quick. So that was something that helped me actually get to bed at a decent time instead of staying up till 1 a.m. doom scrolling and, you know, helping with my my mind (laughs) at that time of night as well. So let's go into lack of movement. I have always loved working out and being active, but I lacked consistency. And when I started this workout, I started a workout program in November. So that's kind of when everything started. I was like, okay, I'm starting this program. I paid for it. And that's kind of where this whole trajectory change happened. Because when you're working out and you're on this program, I needed something to keep me consistent. And that's why I joined it. Because I just needed, like, you do this on this day, this on that day, you know, just like a flow. And this is what you eat. I just needed consistency for a while in order to build those habits again. Because I'd lacked it for so long. So even for you, if you feel like you are having a hard time with lack of movement, start small. You know, this can be built into your morning routine where you take a daily walk. You take a 15-minute walk every morning. Block out time in between your clients to stretch. Start a weekly workout class. Hop on YouTube and do some yoga, right? Movement is so important, especially as service providers and especially as lash artists where we sit the majority of our day. So making sure that you are putting in that type of movement. And I'm not saying you have to get onto a whole workout and like lose weight or anything. This is just about like the health of our, of our bodies, right? Just, it is healthy to move our bodies to walk. So obviously as I added more movement into my day, I found that I had more energy to do the other parts and the other things that I wanted to do with my business. I had more energy throughout the day with my clients. I felt better. My back and my shoulders didn't hurt. As I got stronger, My back definitely stopped hurting because as you build your abs, it helps with your back. You know, all of those good things there. Um, Fuel. Let's get into fuel. Food, right? I don't buy into like going on a diet or any of those like fad weight loss programs. Like the program that that I'm in is a very just like whole foods based. Like it's no like processed bars or anything like that. And if like that's worked for you, then 100% do what works for you. But for me, um, I believe that fueling our bodies with healthy, nutritious food and hydrating with water, right? So fuel was something that I had to really work on. Once again, I've always eaten pretty healthy, but I'm a snacker at night. I am like, or a binge eater at night where, you know, didn't eat all day, maybe skipped breakfast, didn't have lunch. And then I would come home and eat every fucking thing in my pantry for dinner, or I would door dash something. So I actually deleted door dash from my phone <laughs> because I was like, you know what? It's so expensive. I don't need to be eating fast food, like whatever it is. So this was something too, that this program actually just really helped me kind of hone in on and get back into like fueling my body with healthy foods, making sure I'm taking a break, that I'm packing a lunch. If I don't have time to pack a lunch, that I even have healthy snacks at my salon that I can grab quickly if I'm in a pinch. 
right? And that is something that's so important. Just have things there. Set yourself up for success. I have like a little snack station for my clients at my salon, but some of the snacks too, like I have chips and popcorn and some candies, but I also have like some protein bars or some like mixed nuts, like things like that. There are a healthy, healthier option for me to grab too if I ever am in a pinch and I don't have anything, right? Have a couple of protein shakes left at your salon, whatever it is. So once again, this was something that I realized that I was self-sabotaging by not taking care of myself. Once again, we have to fill our cup in order to pour into others. So sleep, movement, and fuel was huge for me. Um, And this is something that once again, take back self-audit and just say, where can I improve on these certain things? Do I need to get more sleep? There's so many studies about how important sleep is for us, for our brains, for our bodies. There's so many studies of how important movement is for us and having fuel and not skipping meals and only surviving on iced coffee. And trust me, I did it for many, many, many years. I still have a caffeine addiction. I just trying to make sure I put some fruits and veggies in there too, right? And that I'm actually eating. So taking that self-audit and just seeing where are we potentially self-sabotaging in the, either of these categories, maybe it's all three like it was for me, and how can we do better? And once again, habit stack, one thing at a time. If you just need to focus on sleep, focus on sleep until that becomes a habit. And then focus on your movement and then your fuel. Focus on one thing at a time, right? Don't overwhelm yourselves because like I said in the beginning, guys, this is something that takes daily reps and daily intention. So let's get into the third part of a way that I was sabotaging myself. And once again, I actually think a lot of you guys are going to relate to this. And that is imposter syndrome and being so fucking scared to move. So I want you to raise your hand if you're like, I can't put out that course because somebody else has the same course. I can't do this until I reach this. I can't, I can't, I'm scared, but she has this same course. So like, I can't do that. She's doing that. So I can't, right? Comparing ourselves to others, having this imposter syndrome. There were times where I would have this idea, right? And it maybe it's something that nobody's done in the industry or was more innovated. And I'd be like, oh, this is a cool idea right? But then I'd be too scared to move. I'd be like, nobody else is doing this. What are people going to think? What if it fails? What if everybody thinks like, Kayla, that is the stupidest idea I have ever heard in my life. What do you think you're doing? That's what was going on in my head. But then what the funny thing that was happened is they say that like the universe brings an idea to you. And then if you don't act upon it, it will release it and pretty much give it to somebody else, right? So this has happened so many times to where that's happened. And I'm like, no, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. Like it's whatever. Three months later, somebody else is doing the exact thing and launched the course, launched the program, the membership, the product, whatever it is. They're doing the same thing that I had the idea to do three months ago. And I'm like, damn it. I could have been the one. I could have been the one to bring this to the industry. And that was something too that I had to sit back and be like, why am I so scared? Like, Why is imposter syndrome holding me back? Who is telling me these things? Who is telling me it's going to fail? Who is telling me that it's not going to succeed? Me. Nobody else. Me. So I saw this video on TikTok and I shared it on my stories a couple of days. His name is Vin. I can't remember his last name. But I loved what he said about imposter syndrome. Somebody said like, how do you do with imposter syndrome, especially since I'm in a new industry and I'm comparing myself to others? How do you deal with this? And this isn't like verbatim of what he said, but this is like my summary of what I took away from it that you need to change the way you view imposter syndrome. It's not your enemy. It's your friend that's telling you, do not be shit. You need to think of it as a voice that is holding you accountable and reminding you to not get complacent and to keep getting better. It's your friend that keeps you sharp. It reminds you to keep building your skills, keep improving, keep staying true to your mission and your values. And that is something that that voice inside my head, when I hear it say, Kayla, you're just out. Are you sure you can do that? Are you sure? No, we're switching it around. It's my friend saying, you need to do this, but you're going to do it well. And you're going to make sure that you're staying sharp and you're staying true to your values. Right? So that was something that completely flipped my mindset when it came to imposter syndrome. And I actually am also reading this book. Um, It's called 101 Essays That Will Change the Way You Think. And I want to read you guys. It was, it's amazing. If you're on YouTube, I have it right here. 
I started bookmarking because I'm like, I was, this was literally in like the first couple pages and it would just blew my mind. Okay. So I want to read this part to you guys because I think it'll be helpful. Okay. So you assume that when it comes to following your gut instincts, happiness is good and fear and pain are bad. When you consider doing something that you truly love and are invested in, you're going to feel an influx of fear and pain, mostly because it will involve being vulnerable. Bad feelings should not always be interpreted as deterrence. They are also indicators that you are doing something frightening and worthwhile. Not wanting to do something would make you feel indifferent about it. Fear equals interest. Right? Like that, that freaking blew my mind. Blew my mind. Fear equals interest. So when you have that fear and you're like, I have this idea or I want to become a trainer. I want to launch a product line or I want to hire my first employee or I want to, I want to become a lash artist, right? And you have this fear, that's interest. And it doesn't mean, fear doesn't mean bad. Fear can mean good, right? So I'm going to wrap it up there. And it's called 101 Essays That Will Change the Way You Think. If you guys want to grab, it's a hefty, I mean, it's a hefty book and I'm not very far in it. Um, I've told myself I'm going to read like one of the essays per day. And that was one of the first ones where I was like, whoa, that's crazy. So I'm going to leave you guys with that today. And I hope that you enjoyed this episode. I hope that you guys maybe got to know me a little bit better and some of you resonated with this. If you are listening, please let me know. Um, Share on your stories. You can send me a DM if you want to chat about anything, if there's anything that really hit and make sure that you mark your calendars for July 10th at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time and come join us on the Educated Artistry's YouTube channel so you can be a part of the live 100th episode celebration and you can win some cool shit and hang out with me. Uh, Make sure that you submit your questions through Educated Artistry Podcast at Gmail, or you can also go participate in any of the polls that we're going to have running this week. I love you guys and have a wonderful week. I will see you on Monday. I was going to say next Wednesday, but this time, if you're live, it'll be Monday. Bye, guys.